Yeah, no, he, you know, he's always had talent. Um, he's been a little challenging um, of the mornings. You know, he's, he's a good filling horse, lots of energy, and sometimes he expresses his energy in somewhat of a dangerous way with wanting to rear up, which can, you know, be uh, – can be a little tough on a rider so but he you know he seems to be growing up mentally um physically he's developed as well and uh you know his works have always been great we had him up at saratoga last summer um, al gold the owner's uh, saratoga resident and he likes to race there we we're very close to getting started there but uh brought him back here to kentucky when saratoga was over and decided to um you know i want to keep him close to to home where i could see him and, and, and kind of watch him because we you know like i said once again he's a little challenging and we got him started but he's a nice colt, and uh, you know he's kind of starting to put it all together now. That you were expecting that you got in the Arkansas Derby? Yeah, honestly, yeah, I thought we he thought he'd run big. Um, it was it was a big effort. You know, he moved into a hot pace. It was a little, um, you know, obviously Florent did a good job, uh, but I was a little concerned when he moved him up in between horses into a hot pace, and you know he was able to, uh, you know, kind of chill out going into the far turn, and then you know, uh, you know, pick it up again down the lane. So I thought it was a very very impressive race. Um, I thought, you know, it was a solid group of horses and it was a decisive winner. And um, I do think, you know, once again, he's a horse that's, um, you know, on the improve and, and developing uh, mentally and physically right now. Before he ever ran, you you didn't know what a cyber knife was. So have you learned what a cyber knife is? Uh, no, no, I, I have. Um, there's been several people reach out over inside the last week that, uh, you know, inquired about the horse and the ownership and, you know, want to get the story behind it, but there, there's definitely, it's definitely a good story behind it. But you know, the basis that it's a, a medical device that, uh, I think Mr. Gold thinks helped save his life when he had yeah, prostate cancer. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I'm still kind of learning about it. And like once, once again, several people have reached out about, you know, uh, where, where the name come from, but it definitely has to do with the medical device. Pretty cool though, that you name a horse. Yeah. Or yeah, something yeah. that he ends up being and, one of the favorites for the Kentucky Yeah, and Al, Al has, um, he, he, um, he has uh, some some um, interesting names. <laughs> uh, this one obviously is a very very good one, but he has some interesting names uh, that, that he likes to give his horses that kind of stick out, which I think is kind of cool. But uh, yeah, he, it's uh, it's it's a pretty neat story. Um, you have two other horses on the Derby Trail in Tawny Port that was second in the uh, Jeff Ruby the Day of the Arkansas Derby. Mm -hmm. uh, you said that uh, John Fort, the owner was interested in going and, and he'd been second with a long shot before in the Kentucky Derby. Talk about the, that decision and what you saw in the Jeff Ruby. Well, he's a nice colt. He's, you know, he's only run four times. Um, he's had three time, three races on the synthetic. They've all really good races. His race uh, at the fairgrounds in the uh, Risen Star, you know, it was a good race. Um, it wasn't a great uh, placing. Um, we decided to go back to the Jeff Ruby, uh, but you know, we're, we're looking forward to giving him another opportunity on the dirt. We're actually, he's actually nommed to the Lexington. We're going to look at the Lexington with him, uh, just to get him some more experience and kind of find out if he, if he'll take to the dirt. Uh, you know, he trains well enough on it. Um, he's a big, good looking colt with a lot of energy and, uh, you know, happy with how he came out of the race. We just shipped him to Churchill, but you know, we're going to, we're going to look at the Lexington with him, uh, as a possibility and, you know, maybe pick up a few more points and, and go from there. And you also have Zozos, who is second in the Louisiana Derby, to one of the horses that you're going to have to beat in Epicenter. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it, but that was only his third career start. Yeah, he's light on seasoning as well. Um, just three runs. Um, just took a step forward in his last race. Um, you know, we think he's a nice colt. We thought he, you know, was set, set, you know, a solid pace last time. Really finished up well. Uh, was beaten by a better horse on that day. You know, we have six weeks to try to close the gap between. Um, you know, Zozos and Epicenter, uh, it's going to be a challenge, but uh, he, is a, he is a good colt. We like him a lot, and he's able to, you know, break and put himself in the race, and I think that was worth a lot going a mile and a quarter here at Derby Day. Uh, what do you make of Epicenter? Nice horse. Um, you know, he's done nothing wrong. He had an incredible winner, uh, huge resume with running in four races down there, and, uh, you know, the three of them he was victorious, and he was probably uh, very unlucky to not win all of them. Uh, but, you know, he, he ran hard. He, uh, he, he ran well, and he's uh, definitely one of the top horse, top three-year-olds right now in the year, uh, you know, this year, and uh, the, heading into the Derby. But you might have an answer for him in Cyber Knife, and the irony is that Cyber Knife is by Gunrunner, who is yeah. the horse that was campaigned and now still is uh, half-owned by Ron Winchell that owns Epicenter. 
You know, last last fall or last yeah, it's probably last fall. And uh, Steve asked me to ask me if I had any gun runners, and I said, yeah, I have one, and I like him a lot. And uh, that's the bad. That was the sad part is uh, watching all his run. I felt I felt like wow, I only have one. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Sometimes you end up with a certain sire. Um, you know, with the young sire, the young stallions, you'll end up with, um, you know, uh, with, like I think the first year we had several Uncle Mo's. We had some uh, in his crop and we had some luck with them. But yeah, it was kind of kind of odd. I felt like that we only had one gun runner uh, with as many babies as we received. And he, you know, once again, he was, he, you know, kind of stood out from the get go. And uh, a different year for you. Last year you came into the Derby with a two year old champion and mm -hmm. a horse who had. Uh, um, it was very consistent, been impressive in um, Mandaloon. And then this year, it was really like the last round of preps before you even had horses with any points. Yeah, no doubt. It was totally different as opposed to last year with obviously Mandaloon and Essential Quality and Caddo River had all established themselves as uh, derby potential, um, you know, as two year olds and early in their three year old season. So. This year we had, um, you know, some Colts, um, these three Colts, and, you know, we could kind of see it playing out. Um, obviously, we needed to get through last weekend, but, uh, you know, we, we felt we felt two, you know, well, the weekend before is actually two weeks ago. We, you know, we felt Zozo's had a big shot in the Louisiana Derby, and he, you know, again, obviously, when he ran second, it was like, okay, well, she should be able to get him with 40. Um, find out more this weekend, and then, obviously, Cyber Knife stepped up in Tawny Port last weekend. So, yeah, two weeks ago this time we, had no horses, but they didn't have a horse with a single point. I mean, that was zero. Uh, so, uh, but but I never did. I, I did feel confident that that one of these colts would jump up and show um, what they showed us in the mornings, and, and uh, you know, be able to get some points and get us in there. Last year was your first Derby, and it looks like so far at this point you're one for one in the Derby. That. <laughs> uh, um, you also have been a student of the game. What are the attributes you see in these horses that make you think that these are true derby horses and not $50,000 saddle tail horses? Um, they're all good physicals. They're all very, very good physicals. Um, you know, obviously Zozos is a homebred, but I mean, a really, really good looking horse and there's plenty of them. Um, really like the way it looks. Um, and then, uh, you know, Cyberknife was an expensive yearling as well as uh, Tawny Port. And listen, that doesn't have anything to do with what they pay for them if they can get to the Derby. But I mean, you know, just based off their price tags kind of tell you that they're, they're solid looking individuals, with plenty of leg and, you know, can get two turns. So th th those are those are a couple of things. And, you know, they just they seem to all have stamina. They all seem to be horses that would, you know, have, have taken to a mile and eighth, obviously Cyber Knife a mile and eighth. Um, Zozos was, you know, part of a, a a hot pace going a mile and three sixteenths, and then obviously Tony Port ran a mile and an eighth um, up at, up at um, Turfway. So you know I, I think they're all horses that, that that are capable of getting a mile and a quarter in the right setup.